The world should know that there is a silent genocide uh, taking place in Karamoja, and that is the main purpose for which some guys have been making noise on whatever is happening in Karamoja. Meanwhile, we have not forgotten the kidnaps. You know, the kidnaps that has uh, started to be. You know, these people they are kidnapping. Yesterday, I saw somewhere that in Luero, seven people from one family were kidnapped in one evening. <laughs> seven people from one family you go and kidnap people from a family are you a witch are you a witch or a wizard you people who move in the night kidnapping people from their homes and from their villages are you a wizard are you a witch so these are things that we should be exposing we should keep sharing like photos like any information you get share it to media we shall always keep sharing connecting with each and every blogger on, on every corner of Uganda to ensure that we expose these impunities that are taking place in Uganda. We do not employ these soldiers with this taxpayer's money to, to go be kidnapping people, brutalizing people. <clears throat> now, you saw the other day, Despot Museveni went to Katanga, I mean, went to, to Chikubo, went and hired youth from Chikubo to come and demonstrate at the Crescent Towers in front of the, U, in the European Union offices in Kampala about the issue of that uh, Ugandans are supporting ECO, support, supporting ECO. Nobody was arrested. Actually, they were led and protected by police of Uganda police force. They were led and they were protected by Uganda police forces. So these things here, we should, if the NRM cadres are demonstrating in the streets of Kampala, the police guide them and they want us to keep quiet on this kind of matters. You see, this madness here must stop. If we are to run the country called Uganda, we need to run it with in honesty and transparency. from the West. Boy, he had to cause it. He had not been having that kind of money, but he has been beating, doing whatever he did to Ugandans. You saw at the peak of the previous election, bribing him. What did Museveni get the money of the oil? What will Museveni do to us? Will we not run away from Uganda, all of us? Do you know what Museveni will do to us if he lands his hands in that oil, in that oil money, in this oil money, this eco money? If Museveni lands his hand and starts exploiting this oil money, we will be finished. We will, we will be finished. We will be done. The reason why, is why we are fighting this eco impunities is because Uganda is not even ready yet to extract the eco, I mean the oil. This eco thing can wait. It, the oil has been there for all these years and the oil can wait even if after 20 or 30 years, we shall, generations to come can benefit from that oil. Not now. Museveni before even before you remember the pre, in the previous elections and whatever how Museveni brutalized Ugandans, killed people, tortured people, kidnapped people, did whatever, bribed and did whatever he did. When he was broke, still borrowing money from the West. What did Museveni get his hands into this eco oil? Will we still be alive? He will finish us. We are even more scared of Museveni than anything because he's a very dangerous thing. He's not even human being. Hmm? You, you, I'm still asking this question. Burijo, Museveni about it alina sende. Buri sende yafuna again the asa again the asa from aba aowa bazungu. Musava zino. Boya yaga na koko ataki ebi ndiwe ikop ebi ndiwe mafuta. Oba boya yet standi soko funya sende yu tujako wera wa. Tujako wera even. We are going to be all dead. Trust me. This man will do the nastiest things. A broke Museveni is easy to deal with and to kick out of power than a Museveni who has access to the oil money. He will kill us, he will destroy us all. So we are very concerned about this ECOP thing and we are following it left and right to ensure that this thing here can even be postponed uh, to, to a, a further year or to a further to, to the near future. So that when this when Uganda is fully ready and prepared for this ECOP thing, really, we can extract the oil. This oil can wait. Eco, the oil is in Uganda's land and it's not going anywhere. It's going to remain here. Even for generation, for generation, it's going to remain here. I call upon every citizen in Uganda to join this fight against Eco. 
One were pig and went yellow. We we are not fighting. Someone is not fighting as a noob supporter. Someone is not a fighting as a MDC supporter. So many. We are fighting as citizens of Uganda who are concerned about the future of this country in all aspects. So the issue is we have 79 trillion shillings debt. Then when we eco begin funding eco, Museum doesn't have that money. Because even the previous month, the previous financial year, they couldn't pay back the money that government borrowed from the central bank, the one the, 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 to run the day-to-day government businesses. So the issue is we have to go and borrow more money. We already have a debt burden of 79 trillion shillings. We need 2 billion US dollars as Uganda to contribute for ECOM. Where will we get that money from? We need not even increase the debt burden of Uganda. So the issue is we want to first put Uganda in the right hands before we begin talking of extracting oil, extracting oil. Me, let me tell you one thing. Anybody who is talking any shit about Robert Chagula in the center right now is an idiot. Anybody who is talking any shit about Rob, Me, I don't care about the weaknesses of Bobby Wine. Bobby Wine is a human being. He has his own weaknesses as a human being or as a leader. But you cannot begin criticizing and saying shit about Bobby Wine right now when he, is, he has come out to champion fights against Eco. Oh, he has made his statement that he's supporting the, 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 the European Union decision or parliament decision on Eco. You cannot come with your shit and begin telling nonsense. Bobby Wine is not, you know, he, he's a leader. He has his own weaknesses as a leader. That one is guaranteed that anybody who is a leader or not, he has their own weaknesses, have their own weaknesses. But you cannot begin saying that Bowen is talking wrong, he is talking rubbish. And also, he, we are championing this cause here. And I call upon all political players, both religious, cultural, traditional, and uh, opinion leaders, elites, we should fight this eco thing together. Something has to be made clear how a common man is going to benefit. Some of you do not know the implication of this thing here, but we will. If you read the article that I wrote, that was published on paper today, uh, the, the either Daily Monitor or, or the Observer newspaper, you'll get to know what I've talked about and some of the things that I I try to make certain things clear. The fight against Eco did not start today. The fight against Eco started in two two thousand in two thousand twelve. Do you know this lady here never under? You first go Mwemugende, Mumanyo or Mubaka Parliament or Wabunyole South, something like that. She was doing social science at Makere University. Do you know what killed Neva Anda? That woman MP. Is she's called Woman MP or Bunyole, Bunyole South, something. You first go and trace about Neva Anda. What happened at Neva Anda's time when they wanted to take Neva Anda's sample to South Africa for, for, for testing? Museum refused that they should not take a sample for testing. We actually took charge of the burial of Neva Anda. Neva Anda was poisoned. That was the real thing. Never and I was poisoned for making noise on Ecop. First of all, there are fights against Ecop has been all along. It did not start today. And it is will continue. We shall advance and build on the blocks that people who have already been killed for uh, murdered uh, for fighting for the right purpose of uh, in on behalf of the citizens of Uganda.